just type in indirect and open bracket and then point to that cell where we've got that, that C3 typed in and then hit enter. Now, what you're going to see is file summary appears. Why does that happen? Well, it happens because whatever's in that cell that we're referring to with indirect is going to be displayed by the indirect formula. So when you first see this, it can seem like counterintuitive behavior, but indirect is allowing us to read an entry in a cell as a formula reference, which has profound implications for things like report building that we're going to do in this video. But just take the time to practice this. So what if we change this to C5? for example. Well, now it says, says cohort name because the value in C5 is cohort name. What if we did E5, for example? And then we, there we can see average age. But perhaps on a single sheet, it's not that interesting, but this idea is going to work across a file. We can reference different worksheets using the indirect formula. This is when it really gets interesting. So what we've got to do is work out what reference do we need to write into a cell to get indirect to read to get the information that we want. And remember, we want to collect all these average figures from all the sheets uh, in the file. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just create the formula as you normally would, because we need this notation here. This is what we need, because we need to recreate that in a cell and then get indirect to read it. So I'm just gonna take that, I've copied it. I'm just gonna put it in here and I'm gonna put it in with an inverted comma at the beginning. And that means it will just be stored as text there. So this is what we need to create. And you can see we've been helped by the fact I've already typed in the worksheet names here, but you could list this using VBA. And with this file, I've enclosed some VBA code, including a short routine to list the names in the file. You can download the file and take a look at that, of course. So we need to recreate this. So how would we do that? Well, to get started, I can use this cell where we've got the worksheet name entered. Just take that down, Control D on the Windows PC. This is a good starting point, but we need to be a little bit more detailed than that because you can see with the sheet reference, we've got these inverted commas and we've got this exclamation mark. And of course, we've got the cell reference at the end there. So how could we do this? How could we concatenate together the cell entry with some text to make this all work. Well, firstly, how would we get that inverted comma at the beginning? Well, this is a little bit confusing, but go ahead, type in speech mark, inverted comma, and speech mark. So it looks like five inverted commas. It's actually two speech marks with an inverted comma in. Then the ampersand, then the and an sign. And let's just hit enter. Let's build it up step by step. And we can see we've now got our inverted comma. So. That's the first thing we wanted. What else do we need? Well, we also want an inverted comma at the end. So can we use this same idea? Just change the notation a little bit. So now we want the ampersand this side because the ampersand connects together the cell reference with the text string, of course. So we've got the and sign and then the same thing, speech mark, inverted comma, speech mark. And that should give us, yeah, the sheet name with the inverted comma either side. So with step by step, we're working through this task, steady and systematic. That's the way to do it. What else do we want? We want an exclamation mark here and we want that H5 reference. Why do we want H5? Well, if I go through the data sheets, I can see the figure that we want, that average figure is on cell H5. So how would we go about getting H5 to display? Well, I've got the inverted comma in here. So to the right of the inverted comma, we want our exclamation mark, and then we want that reference types in H5 there. Mm. Okay, let's hit enter. Let's give this a go. And I can see that's just about what we want. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and down arrow on the Windows PC, control D, and we're going to take that formula down. And suddenly we've got exactly the notation we need to work with indirect to bring this average figure in. Mm. We can go to the next column type in equals indirect, open the bracket. And now all we need to do is reference that cell where we've got the reference written out. We can hit enter and I can see we're returning 46.36. Let's go to the cohort one sheet. I can see we've got 46.4 with the rounding. That will be the same figure. So it's the same thing now. Control D, just bring down that formula and cohort to 51.35, 51.4, close enough. 
cohort three, 50.62, and I could go through and check them all. But can you feel, can you feel the power of the indirect formula? It's Chris here. And if you enjoyed this video, I've got a special treat for you. We've got a full one hour session from our Members Monday community. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is sign up, put your email into the link below this video. We will email you some information about our fantastic Members Monday community, but it's absolutely free. It's a one hour session. The link is in the video description below.